friends, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be providing you my thoughts and review and a demonstration of the Natasha Denona Bloom Blush and Glow Palette. This is my first Natasha Denona product that I have ever used. I've been using this for two weeks now, so I have some thoughts on this uh, that I am happy to share. But before we get into my thoughts on the product, let me tell you a little bit more about this palette. So I'm not going to talk too much about the brand Natasha Denona. I feel like if you watch anything in the sort of YouTube makeup space, what you know about Natasha Denona is also what I know, which is that it is expensive makeup. Uh, Natasha Denona is a makeup artist. Uh, she has palettes out now, a lot of eyeshadow palettes is I think what she's best known for. And those eyeshadow palettes, if you buy them here in Canada, are probably around $120. They are crazy expensive. She does have other products. There's like almost a full line of makeup here. There's primers and foundation and concealer and there is lipstick, but I feel like the eyeshadow palettes are what people know her best for. If you were to buy this here in Canada, you'd probably be buying it from Sephora and it would be costing you $73 Canadian for this palette, which has two cream products and two powder products. That is a lot for a palette. You would also notice that if you were on the Sephora site, it has almost five out of five stars. It looks like maybe like 5.7 or 4.75 out of five. So people do really like it. This palette is described as an ultimate glow palette inspired by Natasha Denona's best-selling diamond and blush palette, featuring some of her best-selling shades and formulas. It's free of paraben, it's cruelty-free and it's gluten-free. So this palette contains a range of exquisite formulas, it says. I'm not sure that four counts as a range, but that's okay. The Hydrating Velvety Cream Blush is designed to give your skin a healthy flush of color. Glow Cream Base is a hydrating luminous cream highlight with real crushed mineral pearls to give your skin the ultimate glow. Duo Glow is a multi-purpose duochrome highlighting powder with real crushed mineral duochrome pearls to give your skin a supernatural shade shifting glow. An Extreme Glow is a multi-dimensional sparkling creamy powder highlight with a soft focus HD finish and a velvety smooth texture. So when they're describing this palette, they say that the Glow Cream base is in peach. It's a natural peach. And this right here, sorry, there's some reflection. Let me show you. Uh, this right here is that peach that they're talking about. The Cream Blush is in fuchsia, and they talk about it being a deep cherry red. And I will say it's quite nice that they have this that closes over the cream products so that you don't get your powder into your creams. Glow Extreme is in light rose, which they describe as a champagne shade. And Duo Glow is in Vibrant Golden Coral, which they describe as Vibrant Coral with Golden Champagne, and that's this shade right here. So it's supposed to be sort of a coral champagne duochrome. On the Sephora site, they do tell you how to use this. They say you apply the cream blush on the apples of the cheeks with a blush brush. You apply the Glow Cream Base on the upper cheekbones with your finger or a highlighting brush. You apply the Glow Extreme Powder on top with a highlighting brush or your finger for an extreme shine. And the Duo Glow Powder goes on top with a highlighting brush or your finger for a multicolored shine. So I feel like that's what you need to know about the product. Let me show you me applying it. I have put on my foundation, which was a slightly higher coverage foundation for me today, as well as my under eye concealer, but I've not set anything because we're gonna go in with some cream products. So this palette has two cream products, but even though they call this the blush and glow palette, I have found that this is really the only blush. This is sort of a cream highlight, but it pulls really pink. And then these are both highlights as well, but this one pulls really pink. So it's just one blush and some very pink toned highlights. But my favorite thing in this palette so far has been using this cream blush because let's talk about this. I feel like cream blush isn't a thing that is really used that much or talked about that much in sort of like the beauty YouTube community. We tend to do foundation, we tend to powder uh, and then go in with like powder products on top. But if you think through it, I mean, my foundation gives me coverage and, you know, some color and that kind of thing to my face. And I set it with generally translucent powder. So there's no reason why I can't go in with a blush that is a cream product, blend that into my foundation. And then if I powder all over, it really sets the cream blush down. So that is what I'm going to do. 
The one thing I will warn you about this product right here, that blush, is it is dark, as you can tell, and it is pigmented. So the first couple of times I went in, it was like clown makeup because I just went way too heavy. So the brush that I've been using with it that I have the most success with is this brush right here. It's a Luxie 50... 524T, but what it is, is it's a duo fiber brush. And the way these duo fiber brushes work is there are shorter hairs that are in there and then longer hairs in between. So it's a very dispersed, very, um, like it only picks up a little bit of product. And even then with this product, you really just want to touch in. Like it looks like I have next to nothing on this brush, but when I start to put it on, you can see right away that blush appearing. So if you do use this product, I would recommend going with a very, very light hand into this blush. It's a beautiful color, but go light. Go light and build, don't go in too much at once. And because it is a cream product, it's a little less forgiving, like it blends, but once you get it down, it really does like stay in place. Like I just tapped in again and I tapped too much. So I just wiped a little bit onto my wrist there. So I'm really just barely touching my cheeks with this very, you know, non-dense brush. What's the opposite of dense? Sparsely packed brush. So there we go, I've got a nice blush going on. And I am going to go into the Glow Cream Base a little bit. I've usually done this in the past with my finger. I'm trying to decide what I want to do today. I don't find this one, I mean, you can sort of see how pink it is there. I'll go in kind of hard on my finger, just so I can show you. See, it's a glow base, but it is so pink. So that's where I wipe the blush off a little bit. And like, look at that. So, I mean, it's a highlight and it's very glowy, but it's almost more like a blush topper. Because if you end up putting this on your cheekbones, it just, it's very pink. So I think what I'll do today, just to play around with it a little bit, is I'm going to use the same brush. I'm just sort of wiping it off a little bit on my forearm. Uh, and I'm going to sort of touch in there a little bit and use it as a blush topper to just give a little bit of extra glow. So I do find that's the only place you can use this because it just pulls too pink. And really, I'm now gonna go over that with powder, which means any glow that's there, I'm really going to be kind of mattifying a little bit. So I'm now gonna go with my powder, and I'm just using this pretty vulgar powder. The first thing I'm going to do is kind of set under my eyes, and sometimes what I'll do is just squeeze my powder brush down and pick up a little bit more product on the edge of it instead of using an entirely separate brush for setting my under eyes. Also because I'm not a super heavy under eye concealer person, I don't need to like set it in a like baking kind of way. And now I'm going to lightly set the rest of my face. And I sort of like to tap the powder around to like get it onto my face and then I'll swirl it in a little. So you can see that blush is still coming through even though I have now set it down with powder and I do find that this will now stay all day. Like it is, it is gonna last as long as my foundation. There is no fading of this blush. And I will mention that it always shows up a little bit lighter on camera than it does in person. So, you know, this is very much all the blush that I need and it will last me all day. Now let's play with these two products. And once again, this right here is a highlight, but it is such a pink toned highlight. And again, I'll give you a demo on my wrist. We focus in. Like that is not a highlight, that is a blush topper, but you can't really use it as a blush because it's going to be too glowy. And I especially can't use it as a blush because I have pitting and texture from acne from when I was young on my cheeks. So if I use a blush that is too glowy, it's just gonna highlight texture that I don't want to highlight. Now this highlight here is quite nice. It's a little bit of a more intense, wet looking highlight and I will swatch that for you too. So 
So that one is very much like a wet champagne colored highlight. So that one's quite nice. So I think what I'm gonna do, let me give you a little bit more light here. I'm going to highlight with this shade, which is the Glow Extreme. And then I will do a little bit of blush topping with the Duo Glow. Um, but in my day to day, I have not been using that one very much. So, we will do that. Actually, I'll do a little bit of this and then blend it out. And all. And I will say that even though it's called Glow Extreme, it's not the glowiest highlight I've ever used. And now for a little bit of the blush topper. Like, look how pink that picks up. And I find that glows even more, but you can really sort of see let me zoom you in so you can see. It really starts to pick up the texture in my cheeks there. Um, it's just, it's so very pink. So yeah, I really start to see the texture a lot more in my pitting and in my um, pores when I use that highlight. Okay, I'm off to go finish off my makeup and then I'll be back with the final part of my review. As I showed you that demo, some of my thoughts started to come out. I am just gonna put it out there. I don't think this is necessarily something you want to spend $73 on. I do think that maybe if you have a deeper skin tone than me, that maybe some of these would work a little bit better, but even then, I feel like the highlighting shades pull so pink that they're really highlighting blush toppers and you're getting two of them in there. So the product that I really like the most in here, which I think came across in the demo, is this cream blush. But I don't think that's a $73 Canadian cream blush, and I think this just opened me up to how I could be using cream blushes more in my makeup routine in a way that would really help my blush last through the day. It doesn't need to be an Natasha Denona blush, and it could be a blush that is a little less pigmented, so I don't have to be so careful to not over apply. But the fact is that it's very nice to have a foundation, a cream blush, translucent powder, and then it really holds it in for the day, which is really nice. I think that these two products, the two cream, the cream highlight, which is so pink, and then I end up putting powder over, doesn't really do it for me. I have even tried um, powdering my face and then using that on a damp sponge to sort of put over, and even then it's just so pink that I can't really use it as a cheek highlight because, or a cheek bone highlight, because it just pulls pink up to there, which doesn't work for me. And same with this powder. I mean, you saw me applying it. It's basically like a blush topper because it is so pink. Um, but for me, I don't really want to highlight the texture on my cheeks. So I just feel like you have a lot of the blush going on here. I do quite like this highlight. It's a good highlight but it's not so spectacular. Like I wouldn't reach for this over maybe my Becca highlight or uh, my, um, what's the Ofra highlight that I have that are really blingy. Or if I want something more natural, um, oh, what's the, uh, what's the highlight that I'm thinking of? The Mary Luminizer. I really think it's an oldie and a classic, but it is such a nice subtle lit from within like natural highlight, that there are other options other than this at better price points. So overall, I think the best thing this palette has done is teach me how much I may like to use cream blushes more in the future, but I am never reaching for these shades. And I would reach for these, but to me, those are not worth the price of this palette, which is too bad. And I'll probably still keep using it in some way because it is a pricey little palette, but I would not recommend that you spend your $73 Canadian on this palette. Have you found any Natasha Denona products that you've bought and you think have really been worth the money? I am super curious. If so, or if not, let me know that in the comments down below. Uh, as always, if you enjoyed this review, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you have not to my channel already. Uh, thank you so much for joining me for this today, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!